Now for the PBS Member Station Spotlight, we shall be taking a look at WCMU-TV in Michigan. WCMU was founded in 1967 by Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant. It became a member station of the National Educational Television Network and in 1970 joined with the new Public Broadcasting Service. In 1975, WCMU set up a satellite station in Alpena, followed by two more in Cadillac and Manistee in 1984. In 2010, WCMU took over operations of WFUM from the University of Michigan, but ceased broadcast on the station in 2017. Programming for WCMU includes local programs such as Ask the Specialists, Capital Report, Destination Michigan, Quiz Central, and Linking Land and Lakes. If you are in Central Michigan, you can tune in to WCMU on these stations with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, and the Michigan Learning channel on the Dot 4 channel. Okay, we're moving on to Smoky Hills Public Television. Smoky Hills Public Television first hit the airwaves in 1982, serving the plethora of counties in western Kansas not already served by the Wichita or Denver markets. Starting with flagship station KOOD Hayes, followed by newer satellite stations across western Kansas from 1989 to 2007. Due to the hilly terrain of western Kansas, most viewers had to access the stations via cable or satellite. In 2009, Smoky Hills Public Television moved to all digital broadcasting and changed its name to Smoky Hills PBS in 2019. Programming for Smoky Hills PBS includes original programming such as Doctors on Call, local sports coverage, Kansas Legislature live stream, Real Ag, Traveling Kansas, Learning Across Kansas, and Kansas Candidates. Today, Smoky Hills PBS provides PBS programming for the whole of western Kansas and portions of southwest Nebraska, impacting over 1.2 million viewers each week. If you're in western Kansas, you can tune in to Smoky Hills PBS on these stations with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel and Create on the Dot 3 channel. Now for today's PBS member station spotlight, we will be leaving the lower 48 and venturing out into the Pacific to look at PBS Hawaii. Hawaii's first two public television stations, KHET and KMEB, signed onto the air in 1966. The two stations became known as Hawaii Educational Television and broadcasted programming from the NET network across the state of Hawaii. In 1970, the service changed its name to Hawaii Public Television and joined the newly formed Public Broadcasting Service. In 2003, the service changed its name once again to PBS Hawaii, and in 2009, both KHET and KMEB abandoned their analog broadcasts and moved to full digital broadcasting. Today, PBS Hawaii provides public television programming across the whole state of Hawaii. KHET serves Honolulu and the island of Oahu, while KMEB serves the rest of the state. Up until 2019, PBS Hawaii turned off its transmitters from midnight until 6, but following the launch of the 24-7 PBS Kids channel, the service moved to 24-hour broadcasting. Programming for PBS Hawaii includes local programs such as Hiki no, Hawaii's new wave of storytellers, Kakao, Hawaii's town hall, insights on PBS Hawaii, and the music program Namele. If you're in Hawaii, you can tune in to PBS Hawaii on these stations with PBS Kids and NHK World on the Dot 2 channel and the 24-7 PBS Kids channel on the Dot 3 channel. Well, it's down to Missouri with Ozarks Public Television. The flagship station for Ozarks Public Television is KOZK Springfield. Before 1974, PBS programming in the Ozarks was broadcast by various commercial stations in the region. In 1974, Springfield Community Television obtained the funding and an FCC license for a public TV station, first hitting the airwaves in 1975. In 1986, KOZJ Joplin was set up as a sister station to the currently operating KOZK Springfield, providing PBS programming to southwest Missouri. In 2001, KOZK operations moved from Drury College to Strong Hall in Missouri State University 
and in 2009, the stations moved to full digital broadcasting. In 2018, tragedy struck when the KOZK transmission tower collapsed during maintenance, resulting in the death of one worker and the hospitalization of three others. Programming had to be relayed through optic and cable transmission until operations moved to the KY3 tower from Fordland that summer. Today, Ozarks Public Television offers PBS programming to southwest Missouri, southeast Kansas, northwest Arkansas, and the far northeast of Oklahoma. Programming for Ozarks Public Television includes local shows such as Ozarks Watch, Video Magazine, Sense of Community, and a whole slew of documentaries. If you are in the Ozarks, you can tune in to Ozarks Public Television on these stations, with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, and World on the Dot 4. Well, it's way down to the bayou for Louisiana Public Broadcasting. The seeds of Louisiana Public Broadcasting were planted in 1957 when KLSE Monroe signed on to the airwaves from the campus of Louisiana State University. However, KLSE signed off the air in 1964, limiting public television programming in Louisiana to WYES New Orleans. LSU professor Lucille Woodward continued to hound the state legislature on the importance of a statewide educational television service. Then, in 1971, the Louisiana Educational Television Authority approved the funding for the new stations. In 1975, WLPB Baton Rouge signed on as the state's newest PBS member station, followed by five more stations from 1976 until 1983. In 2001, Louisiana Public Broadcasting launched the cable-only channel LPB Kids and You, which, opposite of regular PBS programming, showed adult programs during the daytime and children's programming at night, but ceased operations in 2005. Programming for Louisiana Public Broadcasting includes local programs such as Louisiana, the state we're in, and Louisiana Public Square, Art Rocks, and Ziggy's Arts Adventure, along with the nationally broadcast cooking series by John Fulce, A Taste of Louisiana, and Hooks, Lies, and Alibis. They have even submitted recordings to the American Archive for public broadcasting. If you are in Louisiana, you can tune in to Louisiana Public Broadcasting on these stations with LPB Kids on the Dot 2 channel and Create on the Dot 3 channel. Anyhow, for our next PBS member station spotlight, we'll be going south to look at Alabama Public Television. In 1953, the Alabama General Assembly created the Alabama Educational Television Commission. In 1955, WBIQ Birmingham hit the airwaves, making Alabama the first state in the Union with an educational television network. Alabama Educational Television was first an NET member station and then joined the Public Broadcasting Service in 1970. New member stations popped up across Alabama from 1956 until 1970. In 1988, the network changed its name to Alabama Public Television and during the 1990s, programming was simulcast for each member station across the state. In 2005, APT began airing in HD across the state of Alabama. Of course, the network has had its share of controversies. In the 60s and 70s, APT refused to air programs pertaining to the Vietnam War and African American communities out of fear of defunding, leading to its license being briefly revoked by the FCC in 1976. In 2019, the network declined to broadcast the Arthur episode, Mr. Ratburn and the Special Someone, due to its portrayal of a same-sex wedding. Programming on APT includes local programs such as documentaries on Alabama history, the news program Capital Journal, Journey Proud, Monograph, Subcarrier, and Discovering Alabama. Today, APT operates nine stations across the whole of Alabama, along with portions of Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, and Tennessee. If you are in Alabama, you can tune in to Alabama Public Television on these stations, with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, World on the Dot 4 channel, and Huntsville ETV on the WHIQ Dot 5 channel. Deep South once again with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. 
Before 1970, the only way for Mississippians to have access to any T and PBS programming was via New Orleans, Tennessee, and Alabama. In 1969, the Mississippi Legislature created the Mississippi Authority for Educational Television. And in 1970, after a year of planning, WMAA Jackson debuted as the first PBS member station in the state of Mississippi, followed by seven more stations over the next four years to create Mississippi Educational Television. Merely four months after starting broadcasting, WMAA met with nationwide controversy for refusing to air Sesame Street due to its racially integrated cast. After national outcry from newspapers and show creator Joan Gantz Cooney, the Mississippi Authority soon reversed its decision. In 2005, the network adopted the new brand of Mississippi Public Broadcasting and moved to full digital broadcasting in 2009. Programming for Mississippi Public Broadcasting includes local programs such as Mississippi Roads and Mississippi Outdoors, as well as the nationally broadcast children's series Between the Lions, produced in partnership with WGBH Boston. Today, Mississippi Public Broadcasting has broadcast coverage for the whole of the state of Mississippi, as well as portions of bordering states. If you are in Mississippi, you can tune into Mississippi Public Broadcasting on these stations with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, MPB Radio on the Dot 4 channel, and MPB Classroom TV on the Dot 5 channel. Now for the PBS Member Station Spotlight. We're moving to the Northwest for a look at Oregon Public Broadcasting. Oregon Public Broadcasting's roots go back to the age of radio, with public radio stations KFDJ in 1923 and KOAC in 1925. In 1957, KOAC-TV began broadcasting from the campus of Oregon State University, followed by KOPB-TV Portland in 1961, KTVR La Grande in 1964, and KOAB Bend in 1970. In 1971, these four stations became known as the Oregon Educational and Public Broadcasting Service. In 1981, they became Oregon Public Broadcasting and in 1993 became a community licensed organization supported by the state of Oregon. In 2006, OPB started airing a digital broadcast and moved to full digital broadcasting in 2009. Programming for OPB includes local programs such as Oregon Field Guide, Artbeat Oregon, Oregon Experience, and Oregon Revealed along with nationally broadcast programs like History Detectives, Barbecue America, Rick Steves Europe, and the travel programs of Art Wolf. Today, Oregon PBS provides public television programming to the majority of the state of Oregon outside the Medford TV market. If you're in Oregon, you can tune in to Oregon Public Broadcasting on these stations, with OPB Plus on the Dot 2 channel, PBS Kids on the Dot 3 channel, and OPB FM on the Dot 4 channel. Now, on to the PBS member station spotlight. This time we're heading northwest for a look at Idaho Public Television. The first public television station in the state of Idaho was KUID Moscow, followed by KAID Boise and KBGL Pocatello in 1971. These three stations shared multiple programs but were ultimately operated independently of each other. In 1981, the Idaho State Legislature cut public television funding by 90% due to two KUID-produced documentaries related to logging practices and lead exposure. For the next year, the three stations were forced to rely almost exclusively on federal funding and private donations until 1982, when the legislature packaged the three stations together as Idaho Public Television. In 2001, Idaho PTV began broadcasting in an HD signal, moving to full digital broadcasting in 2009. Programming for Idaho Public Television includes local shows such as Idaho Experience, Dialogue, Idaho Reports, Outdoor Idaho, and Idaho in Session. Today, Idaho Public Television offers public television programming for the whole of the state of Idaho and portions of eastern Washington and Oregon and western Montana. If you are in, in Idaho, you can tune in to Idaho Public Television on these stations with Idaho PTV Plus on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, World on the Dot 4 channel, and PBS Kids on the Dot 5 channel.
down to the southern Great Plains with Oklahoma Educational Television Authority. The Oklahoma Educational Television Authority got its start in 1953 when the Oklahoma legislature passed a new bill creating a non-commercial educational television service. After securing funding and constructing transmitters, station KETA-TV Oklahoma City hit the airwaves in 1956, followed by KOED-TV Tulsa in 1959. Both stations were members of National Educational Television, but in 1970 switched over to the newly created Public Broadcasting Service. In the late 70s, two more stations were added to the OETA network, and the network began moving to digital broadcasting in 2003. Recent budget cuts from the Oklahoma legislature, though, have forced OETA to limit its programming and staff, and some legislators debate on whether OETA should still receive state funding, but a small number of rural legislators still realize the importance of the network to people across Oklahoma. Programming for OETA includes local programs such as the OETA Movie Club, Oklahoma Horizon, Gallery, Oklahoma Gardening, and the Oklahoma News Report, and producing nationally broadcast programs such as the Calb Report and repackaged reruns of the Lawrence Welk Show. Today, OETA offers public television programming to the whole of Oklahoma, along with portions of northern Texas, the western Ozarks, and southern Kansas. If you are in the state of Oklahoma, you can tune in to OETA on these stations with World on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, and PBS Kids on the Dot 4 channel. So, next up is NWPTV in Washington. Northwest Public Broadcasting is held by KWSU TV Pullman, Washington, originally started in 1962 on the campus of Washington State University. In 1987, KTNW Kennewick joined KWSU to bring PBS programming to the southeastern portions of Washington State. In 2009, both stations abandoned their analog signals and moved to full digital broadcasting, and starting in 2018, both stations are operated under the umbrella of Northwest Public Broadcasting. Programming for Northwest Public Broadcasting includes local shows such as Access NW, our Neighbors' Stories, and the children's series Ask Dr. Universe. Today, Northwest Public Broadcasting provides PBS programming to Southeast Washington, Northern Idaho, and Wallowa County, Oregon. If you are in Southeast Washington, you can tune into Northwest Public Broadcasting on these stations with Create on the Dot 2 channel and World on the KTNW Dot 3 channel. Now for the PBS Member Station Spotlight. This time we'll be paying a visit to the main public broadcasting network. The network started out with station WCBB Augusta in 1961, followed by WMEB Orono, and three more stations over the next decade, all under the jurisdiction of the University of Maine system. In 1992, the public TV stations in Maine and public radio stations joined forces to create Maine Public Broadcasting Network. In 2005, Maine Public was one of a select number of PBS member stations to air the controversial Postcards from Buster episode, Sugar Time. In 2008, due to lack of funding, Maine Public had to make plans to cut costs, including shutting down WMED for six months and turning off transmitters for five hours each evening. In 2009, they rescinded these plans, although in 2012 they faced more financial uncertainty after Governor Paul LePage opposed cutting off all state funding for Maine Public. Thankfully, the state legislature shot this plan down and changed the funding model, effectively keeping the station afloat. Programming for Maine Public includes local programs such as the Maine Experience, Maine Watch, Assignment Maine, and Maine public community films. Today, Maine Public offers PBS programming to Eastern Maine with translators offering coverage to portions of the western part of the state. If you are in Maine, you can tune in to the Maine Public Broadcasting Network on these stations with Create on the Dot 2 channel, World on the Dot 3 channel, and PBS Kids on the Dot 4 channel.
It's high time that we had a look at New Hampshire PBS. Hey, New Hampshire PBS, coming right up. New Hampshire PBS started out in 1959 as WENH-TV Durham broadcast from campus of University of New Hampshire. The station became a member of the National Education Television Network and during the late 60s set up satellite stations and translators around the state of New Hampshire, creating the New Hampshire Network. In 1970, the New Hampshire Network became a part of the public broadcasting service. In 1972, the studio in Durham began producing programming in color. And in 1976, the New Hampshire Network changed its name to New Hampshire Public Television. In 2009, New Hampshire PTV made the full transition to digital broadcasting and in 2017 changed its name to New Hampshire PBS. In the past, New Hampshire PBS produced its own programs like Granite State Challenge, Windows to the Wild, Amy LaBelle's Cooking with Kids, and The State We're In. They also produced the nationally televised cooking program Chow Italia with Marianne Esposito. One of the station's most notable alumni is Tom Bergeron, who got his start on the first season of Granite State Challenge. Today, New Hampshire PBS engages and inspires nearly one million viewers each month. If you're in New Hampshire, you can tune in to New Hampshire PBS on Channel 11, with NH Explore on the Dot 2 channel, World on the Dot 3 channel, Create on the Dot 4 channel, and PBS Kids on the Dot 5 channel. Now for the PBS Member Station Spotlight. We're heading to the middle of the country for a look at Kansas City PBS. Kansas City PBS signed on the airwaves as station KCSD-TV in 1961. The station was operated by the Kansas City School District and was originally a national educational television member station before moving to the public broadcasting service in 1970. In 1971, the Kansas City School District put the station up for sale, after which it was purchased by the nonprofit Public Television 19 Incorporated to create KCPT TV in 1972. That fall, KCPT began broadcasting in color, and in 2002, the station won a National Emmy Award for its documentary Be Good, Smile Pretty. In 2008, KCPT began broadcasting in high definition, and in 2020, the station changed its name to Kansas City PBS. Programming for Kansas City PBS includes local programs such as Kansas City Week in Review, Rare Visions and Roadside Revelations, Ruckus, and The Local Show. Today, Kansas City PBS serves the whole of the Kansas City metro area, as well as the St. Joseph television market. If you are in the Kansas City area, you can tune in to Kansas City PBS on Digital UHF Channel 18, or Virtual Channel 19, with KCPT2 on the Dot 2 channel, Create on the Dot 3 channel, and PBS Kids on the Dot 4 channel. And the one that we're keeping is University of North Carolina Television. PBS North Carolina started in 1955 with WUNC-TV Chapel Hill, followed by four more satellite stations over the next 12 years. WUNC was originally an NET member station but changed over to the public broadcasting service in 1970. Afterwards, five more satellite stations joined up, creating a state network branded as North Carolina Public Television. In 1995, the network rebranded itself as University of North Carolina Television, or UNC-TV for short. In 2009, the network made the transition over to full digital broadcasting, and in 2021, they changed their name to PBS North Carolina, powered by the UNC system. Programming on PBS North Carolina includes local programs such as North Carolina Now, Our State, and Carolina Outdoor Journal, along with nationally broadcast shows like The Woodwright's Shop, Growing a Greener World, and The Zula Patrol. Today, PBS North Carolina serves almost the entirety of the state, along with portions of Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee. If you are in North Carolina, you can tune in to PBS North Carolina on these stations, 
with PBS Kids, the Explorer Channel, and the North Carolina Channel on the digital sub-channels. Now for the PBS Member Station Spotlight. This time we're off to the Beehive State for a look at KUED Salt Lake City. KUED first signed onto the airwaves in 1958 with limited resources and a grant from the Ford Foundation being the only thing helping them sign onto the airwaves. After the station's early programming was locally produced, often just a teacher standing at a blackboard, while the other half was provided courtesy of National Educational Television. In 1970, the Public Broadcasting Service stepped out onto the stage of American television, allowing KUED to showcase more entertainment-based programming. Of course, KUED was not the only PBS member station serving the state of Utah. Station KBYU from nearby Brigham Young University was also a PBS member station, however it decided to drop its PBS programming in 2018, instead showcasing its own BYU TV programming. In 2019, KUED rebranded itself as PBS Utah. Programming for KUED includes local programs such as Contact, This is Utah, The Hinkley Report, and Utah Insight. Today, KUED provides PBS programming to a large portion of the state of Utah. Alongside its sister educational station, KUEN, and satellite stations, KUES and KUEW. If you are in Salt Lake City, you can tune in to KUED on Virtual Channel 7 or UHF Channel 27, with World on the Dot 2 channel, PBS Kids on the Dot 3 channel, and Create on the Dot 4 channel. Maryland Public TV. Maryland Public Television had its roots with WMPV Baltimore in 1969, the first station of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcast. Four more satellite stations followed, and by 1975, a statewide educational network was established. In 1984, the five stations came together to form Maryland Public Television. Starting in 1999, MPT began dedicating its afternoon programming block to airing British TV sitcoms and dramas, which it still does to this day. In 2009, the network moved to full digital broadcasting, but September 2015 saw budget cuts to the station. To keep afloat, MPT outsourced its master control operations to public media management. Programming for Maryland Public Television includes local programs such as Chesapeake Collectibles, Maryland Farm and Harvest, Direct Connection, Outdoors Maryland, State Circle, and Artworks, along with nationally broadcast shows like the McLaughlin Group, Motor Week, the National Geography Bee, My Greek Table with Diane Kochilas, To Dying For with Kate Sullivan, and the cooking programs of barbecue grillmeister Stephen Reichlin. Today, Maryland Public Television offers educational programming to the Chesapeake Bay Area, along with parts of Western Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. If you are in Maryland, you can tune in to Maryland Public Television on these stations. With MPT2 and Create on the Dot 2 channel, PBS Kids on the Dot 3 channel, and NHK World on the Dot 4 channel. Speaking of which, Time to move on to the PBS Member Station Spotlight. This time, we're going to look at Kentucky Educational Television. KET was started by O. Leonard Press, a member of the University of Kentucky faculty. Originally established as a public television station for the university, Press and his associates later planned for a statewide public television service in the same veins as Alabama Educational Television. In 1962, Press became executive director for the Kentucky Authority for Educational Television, and in 1965, Ashland Oil CEO Paul Blazer donated 13 transmitter sites to the Authority, allowing Kentucky Educational Television to finally hit the airwaves in 1968. For the first two years, KET was a member of the National Educational Television Network, before moving to the Public Broadcasting Service in 1970. In 1982, KET set up KET Enterprises to develop, acquire, and distribute programming between PBS and itself, 
1996, the Authority acquired the license to WKPC Louisville, rebranding the station as WKMJ. In 1999, KET became the first digital television station in the state of Kentucky, eventually moving to full digital broadcast in 2009. Programming for KET includes local programs such as Comment on Kentucky, Wood Songs, Kentucky Afield, Louisville Life, Kentucky Collectibles, and Kentucky Life. Today, KET offers public television programming to the entirety of the state of Kentucky, along with bordering states in the Ohio River Valley. If you're in Kentucky, you can tune in to KET on these stations, with KET2 on the .2 channel, Kentucky Channel on the .3 channel, and PBS Kids on the .4 channel, while WKMJ carries KET2, the Kentucky Channel, and World. Thank you.